I know it must be so hard to focus on application stuff right now that you're basically stuck at home and you don't even have normal school so it might seem like, I don't know, applying to school is like the last thing you probably want to think about and that's not, you're not wrong. I mean, it's very, very distracting. Everyone's saying this. I just feel very lucky that I can stay home and like, that I can stay here with someone and I can just be safe. So you should do the same thing, but hey, this is a great time to get ahead on some stuff. While you're at home, you can start and I don't know, kind of outline your application process and like maybe like what you want to write about, kind of just like revise stuff, plan stuff. I know it's kind of hard to plan right now, but at the same time you can have like a uh, not like a not as like written in stone kind of life plan, but just like a lousy outline. No, I shouldn't use the word lousy. I mean like not as concrete, you know? Like it's not set in stone, you can change it, but like for now you have a path to focus on. And I think that's great because you don't feel lost, you know? I remember when I was applying, I had no idea where to start at first because like there were just so many things to get done. But once you have a full on list and you can start checking off things, you feel more assured because like, once it's all checked off, you're safe and you don't have to worry about it anymore. I wish people would have told me when I was applying because I was really, really struggling to get help. So, here it comes. Okay, number one. GPA. Okay, so because I transferred, I did not bring my high school GPA. My high school GPA was about 2.8 if you count it all together, which is kind of embarrassing to say, but I'm just gonna be full on transparent here. My transfer GPA was 3.8 that I brought from Santa Monica College. When it comes to your high school grades, please, please make sure to translate them all. Translate them with like a translation agency that's like recommended by the government or like I don't know, just like do your research that's like, that's been accepted everywhere because it's just so important that like you get all your grades through and like through a good, like you just need to translate them. If you don't translate them, probably they're not gonna understand it and they're not gonna understand your grades and let's say the way USC does their application is, a rol is on a rolling basis. So for transfer students, they started notifying people from late April to like end of May, right? But if you didn't send in your transcript well, like if they don't have them on file, then they're gonna admit someone because they had all their files together. Oh my God, I can say it. They had all their shit together. So, I mean, not literally. I guess this could be both literally and figuratively, but they had all their files together so they have the grades, they have the essays. Okay, good, accept it. But if you don't send it in on time, then you're gonna delay your decision or even jeopardize your admission. So please make sure to go ahead, translate all the grades. For me personally, I needed a, like an authenticated transcript from all of the high schools I went to which was a pretty interesting journey because I had to fly back to Hungary, go back to my old school that I hated and talk to the headmaster who couldn't even remember me because out of five years, I only went there for two. And I had to beg her to sign this random document for me because in Hungary, we don't even have an electronic system. We just have a little booklet that they give us with our grades. Here in the US, everything is like, it's basically a grade report that you get electronically. So that's why universities think you could just send that through. 
and probably like if your school is international or like an American school or British school or I don't know if it's like if it has some kind of like super ultra tech to like send that through that's great and you go ahead but if not do what I did and just like go to a translation office translate it and send it through the mail pay attention to what the university's website says about transcripts and then follow that because most schools I mean private schools will want your transcripts ahead of time you're gonna manually type in every single grade that you have and you're also gonna tell them if you're like estimated to like let's say you're planning to take five classes next semester you're just gonna put PL as plan or like you can put like um, IP as in like in progress so you're they're gonna see what you're about to take what you're currently taking and like stuff you took before okay enough about the grades now let's talk about activities okay so activities are not only things that you do at a school club in Hungary, we basically had like a basketball team and maybe a volleyball team. I think that was it. Like, you know, there wouldn't be a lot of things that you could put on your resume if you weren't interested in those, in those things. Think of this as like a resume. So basically you're just picking out the jobs or like positions that you've been doing that you think is worth mentioning and it's relevant to who you are currently. I even listed the fact that I lost X weight in ninth grade because you can talk about that, you know, like if you don't have um, a club that you go to or like, I don't know, some kind of sports organization that you attend, you can talk about your own dedication to certain things and you can just define what you did and like what you achieved like the point is that they see your progress doing an activity so don't worry if you don't have those clubs at your school because not a lot of people do outside of the US and you can just talk about stuff you do like pet sitting or like if you're working for your family's restaurant or anything you know like if you deliver pizza or like whatever you know like to them it's cool that you're doing all those things and you have great grades and like then you talk about your life story later in the personal essay section the point is that they see the whole you they see that you're not just sitting at home doing nothing you're either working or like working out or maybe you're a pet walker or a babysitter or you draw i don't know there's a lot of things you can do. You can volunteer as well. I mean, that's something that's great. Like you should, I mean, you should volunteer anyway, not just to get in, get into college, but you know what I mean? Like these are tangible things that you can show. <laughs> personal essay. I personally wrote about my whole journey because I, really really wanted to become a filmmaker since i was little like literally 10 years old i felt so alone because in hungary i felt like there was no arts education we didn't have the film equipment or like the newspaper like the school newspaper all those things i saw on american television i was just like yearning to have in my life when you're writing your personal essay, just make sure to like focus on something that's deep to you. Don't try to show off because every time people start writing their first draft of the essay, they think they should write down what seems impressive, but that's not what they're looking for at all. Trust me. It's just writing in general or any sort of art. like. If you're trying to create something to please others, then like you're not showing yourself and they just want to know who you are. If you've had some sort of like trauma or like something difficult to deal with, you should share it. Like you should show how that impacted your life and not what you gain out of it, but like 
the process you went through and how you're feeling now looking back. I'm not saying to like write about anything too tragic. All I'm just trying to say is that sometimes the hardest thing to write about or open up about is the most important thing to you maybe and because you're not telling this to like people you know in your circle or something it's not like you're telling people who you don't who you're not ready to tell it's like you are telling strangers who will never even meet you probably and you're just giving them the bigger picture of you so make sure to try and brainstorm ideas for this um there's a couple of essays it depends on what schools you're applying to once again schools like usc like privates um i think the format is you write one 650 word general essay like they have a question for you for everyone and then you can choose two additional ones, I believe. Like one of them is YUSC, and which every school usually has. Like they have their like Y Loyola, Y NYU. Then you also have one that you could pick. And I picked the one that read like, what is something that's essential to understanding you? And I talked about having ADHD and realizing it at a very late age. So I was like, I was totally unaware and I was just slipping in classes. So that's something I wrote about. But also you can find books online about simple essays. If you search for essays of students who got into like Harvard or Yale, like Ivy Leagues, those will work best because like, you know, if you can get into a 5% school, like 5% acceptance rate school, probably that essay will work for schools like Berkeley, UCLA, USC, all those schools. I'm not saying any school is better than the other. I'm just saying like, if, if that essay caught the attention of the Harvard admittance committee, or like admissions committee, then probably USC would like it too because the other school is more selective. I definitely recommend doing research on that. I'm just gonna say one thing about this. Just take the IELTS. TOEFL is so just, I just hate it. I took it three times and I got a 90, I think, which is pretty close to USC's requirement. It's a hundred and it's not like they're not gonna accept you if you don't get a hundred. That's what the admissions officer told us at the transfer day. But, you know, you don't want to put yourself into that position. If you can always try to achieve higher than what the line is, because that's why they're going to accept you. You know, they see that you're more than the average who applies. I'm not saying they're not going to accept you if you don't have that score, but you know, you, you, you should try to aim for that at least. So once I got the TOEFL back, I was very dissatisfied. The TOEFL is not even about your English level, your English proficiency. Your, the TOEFL is about your concentration. And they're giving me this when I have like strong ADD and I'm just like, are you serious? Like they, TOEFL is like going through security at the airport. Like they confiscate all your stuff from your, even your water bottle. I need my water. I drink water like every 30 minutes or so. When they took my water water away for four hours, I was I was getting kind of scared. I was like, Oh God, like I'm, I'm literally going to be locked in into that room just testing. And they place you in the same room as everyone else who's taking the test at that time. Well, or like earlier times even. So while you're doing your reading section, someone is doing their speaking section. While I was doing mine, I was reading about some insect, which I'm terrible at biology or anything that's related to science. So when this dude was talking about like his cultural stuff, like all the like food, 
food parties that his family was having for his speaking section, I was quite distracted. Like I wanted to be a part of his food party. I know that IELTS costs more, but trust me, if you take it once, I'm pretty sure you'll pass. It's very, like, it's more personal. It's one of those, like, like, similar to like a high school setting. And like, you're with other people in the room. It's just a test. There's a person who's handing it out. And then like, for your speaking, you actually get a time. And then you're speaking to a real human being, not the computer counting down every second you have. So IELTS, I recommend. Um, the IELTS I took translated into like, 115 on the TOEFL out of 120 as opposed to the score that I had before which was like 90. Which brings me to the next order of business, SAT and ACT scores. I pulled this data out of the current most recent admission like PDF. I am honestly not the best person to ask for ACTs and SATs because I did not take them guys. I'm sorry, I know it's embarrassing and the reason why I did not take it is because I did not apply to my colleges straight out of high school. The reason for that was because one, I wanted to save money, two, I was really really struggling with my grades because I had GPAs from like three different countries because I went to high school in Hungary, then in England and then here in the US. So. It was kind of chaotic and like, I was just happy that I could graduate and like the US, like my US school accepted my grades that I brought in because they were on different scales. And I mean, if you're interested, I can talk about that too. But like Amer the American high school experience. But oh my God, the bearded dragon is just like climbing down. We're going back, Robin. Say bye. Okay, I'm back. All right, so I didn't take the SATs nor the ACTs. So I don't have a score on that for you, which I'm so sorry about. I know that it has been reformed since the last time, at least the SATs. I do know that for people who are more into like science and math, they do recommend the ACT more because it's more it has like a chemistry component and stuff like that, but don't quote me on that because I have, I actually don't know. And the SATs are supposed to be more for like humanistic majors. Humanistic? I meant, oh my God, I'm blanking on this word so bad. I meant, I can't remember. This is crazy. This is what quarantine does to you. You become like brain dead, or at least that's just me. Um, what is that word? Human, not humanitarian, not humanistic. Humanities. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. So if your major falls under arts and humanities, you might prefer to take the SATs because it's more about reading comprehension and um, essay writing and stuff. I know both of the tests have these, but like, let's say the SATs do not have any sort of like science section, only math. Also, if if you do not want to take the SATs and ACTs and also like you feel like you're not getting good grades to get in or let's say you don't get in in the first round, you can always transfer. That's what I did because it saves you a lot of money and also if you don't have the best grades, you can basically erase that and you can go to community college. Like you just complete your one or first two years um, in community college and then you transfer in and you only complete like the last two years and there you can just focus on your major. Because in the US, in the first two years, you're focusing on general education anyway, which is called gen eds. Um, yeah, so that's an option. I think this is it for today. And please take care get some masks, don't hoard, please. It's so, yeah, exactly. Stay safe. I hope your family is all well and yeah.
please let me know if you have any other questions. I think the next video I'm gonna do, I'll be focusing on community colleges and <clears throat> what that means and how that is and my experience at a community college, which was pretty, was amazing. So, check back, subscribe, and peace out. This is Vicky the Alien.